So somebody gives you an abelian category, and they say, what's the derived category? The answer is, you just take the category of cochain complexes, which is yet another abelian category, and some of the morphisms are quasi-isomorphisms, and you just invert those. So you um, invert the class of quasi-isomorphisms. And that's the derived category. But maybe we should say a little bit more. So what kind of a thing is the derived category, actually? What is it for? What does it do? We can think about the objects of the derived category as a kind of generalized resolution. Um, a resolution is a particular kind of cochain complex or chain complex, and we want to identify two resolutions, think of them as isomorphic objects in the category, if they should be thought of as resolving the same thing. Given a pair of cochain complexes, the A's and the B's, and a morphism of cochain complexes, say F from the A's to the B's, there are induced maps on the cohomology groups. Um, which we could call HI of F for each I. You say that a map F is a quasi-isomorphism if each of these um, induced maps on the cohomology are isomorphisms for all I. A nice illustrative example of quasi-isomorphisms is given by resolutions. So suppose you have, for example, some R module for some ring R and a projective resolution. We would like to say that the resolution is in some sense isomorphic, or in fact quasi-isomorphic, to the module itself. To make sense of this, we need to interpret both as complexes. Of course, the projective resolution is itself a complex, which you can then continue by zeros on the right. The module we want to interpret as a complex sitting in degree zero, concentrated in degree zero. Now, um, if you look at these two complexes and calculate their cohomology groups, you find that the complex on the top is exact everywhere, because this was exact except at the zero spot, where the cohomology is given by the co-kernel here, which is exactly M. And so you find that the cohomology groups are zero unless I is equal to zero, in which case you're M. Similarly, downstairs here, it's clear that this cohomology only in degree zero, and that is exactly M. Well, the fact that these two cohomology groups are the same is actually realized by a morphism of these chain complexes, which is just induced by this map right here. So this map right here, you can draw as a vertical arrow, and filling in all these other things with zero maps, you see that there's a morphism between these two chain complexes, which induces this isomorphism of identifying the M and the M together and gives you that quasi-isomorphism. So now that we know what the quasi-isomorphisms are, we just need to know what it means to invert them. So given a category and a class of morphisms, what should it mean to construct a new category, C adjoin S inverse, where we've inverted, made into isomorphisms, the morphisms in S? So this will be a new category that comes with a canonical functor from your original one to it, such that if I have any other category, say D, and a functor from C to D, such that in here the morphisms in S end up being isomorphisms in D, then there should exist a unique map um, from the localized category to D, making this diagram commute on the nose, not up to natural colons, just on the nose, in fact. Now, you can basically always do this um, with the proviso that you might have the issue that your HOM sets in this new category um, aren't maybe sets, maybe they're classes, because maybe there are uh, just, just too many of them, but modulo some set theoretic um, philosophical issues, you can always form this category. Maybe it's just a very big category. So now that we know what it means to localize the category, and we know what the quasi-isomorphisms are, we can say what the derived category is in general. So it comes in these different flavors. Here, star can be plus, minus, B, or just nothing. And in either of these cases, that flavor of the derived category is what happens when you take that flavor of the category of Cauchian complexes, and you invert the quasi-isomorphisms. So this is great, this is fine, but it's also problematic. Here are some problems with this. First off, there's the set theoretic problem of, is this even a category? 
For example, if you don't like the fact that your HOM sets aren't actually sets, that they're maybe HOM classes or something like that, maybe that bothers you. There are practical issues. Is this really computable? The, um, I haven't said how to make this uh, localized category, but although these things always exist, the description of morphisms in these categories is awkward, shall we say. Um, and how to compose morphisms is, a, is, again, an awkward process. You have to concatenate these strings of, um, of morphisms going forward and backwards. The description gets more and more complicated the more things you compose. Finally, there are structural issues. For example, that is to say, this derived category is actually not just an abstract category. It has extra structure that we would like to actually use. In particular, it's a triangulated category. The solution to all these problems is to pass through the homotopy category of complexes as an intermediate step. To first go from the cochain complexes to the homotopy category and then to the derived category. Doing this, you'll see that all these problems can be circumvented.